Anambra State is located in southeastern Nigeria with a population of over 4 million and predominantly Igbos. The state is blessed with a huge tourism potential and cultural heritages. Nigeria is brimming with tourism products yet untapped. Tourism has become the new frontier for job creation and welfare in most countries around the world, with the ability to generate income above oil and gas. In Nigeria, however, we are yet to wake up to this reality. The trend is changing, however, slowly. Cross River State in Nigeria leads the park through the Calabar Carnival, which has become a huge tourism event, attracting over 2 million visitors into Calabar this year and over 1.6 million fit in the definition of tourists. We have grown it from, from 800,000 to 1.1 million to 1.6 million in 2016 visitors. These are human visitors from the state. Other states in Nigeria are slowly catching the tourism flu. Of particular interest is Anambra State with the launch of Anambra Tourism Portal Initiative, a private sector-driven initiative in partnership with Gugi Africa and Anambra State Government. Gugi Africa was present at the launch in Oka, the capital of Anambra State. <laughs> Present at the launching was the Commissioner for Diaspora and Affairs, Culture and Tourism. Traditional rulers, dignitaries and tourism enthusiasts from Anambra and Lagos. The commissioner spoke glowingly on tourism, a catalyst for an emerging economy. Tourism in Anambra, historically, tourism in Nigeria and Anambra in particular, could be said to be as old as man is said. Even in Avu, Ibo Jibulibo, then I then I then I State. This is a good beginning for Anambra State. The Anambra man is a tourist. The Anambra man is all over the world. So going out of the Anambra environment to enjoy other parts of the world. So this is an opportunity now to grow the tourism in Anambra State. The president and founder, Anambra Tourism Portal Initiative, summed it up with a paper presentation extolling the import of tourism activities on the community, tourists, and local authorities. With Anambra Tourism Portal Initiative, we would set up that platform that will send messages across the world to let them know that Anambra is a place worthy to invest. Let's find out how ready they are. In the government plan of action is economic blueprint. It has about 15 enablers, which include those ancillary activities, transportation, health, education, and all that. Tourism is one of them. And tourism haven't been identified as one of the massive income earners beyond oil and gas and agriculture. Is another way, but how is the government approaching it? Approaching it through public-private partnership, and that is what she has enunciated here. The place of tourism, as I observe it, being in government, is to power the Anambra economy from improving what I call the social cultural economy. You know, it's easy to talk about sites, whether they do exist or not, and then we we'll lose focus of the fact that there are social behavior 
cultural behavior, cultural things that people do that attract and keep people and train people. So for me, that is actually what I see. I have said that in December, every December in Anambra State, if you see the kind of thing that happened in all the 179 communities, they have not been galvanized and put together into one big event. And then you'll be baffled that that is actually the kennel of tourism in Anambra State. Tourism is one of the enablers of our economic blueprints. And I know this year's budget, we have a lot on tourism to do. Yeah, we are looking at um, Owere Ezuka, we are looking at Obunike, Ojuku Banka, and uh, uh, Obugad okay. to develop these tourist sites. Actually, tourism in Anambra State can always get to its sites. But the only thing is that, you know, in everything, there's a rule to it. Right. Yes. The ministry is now doing their own bit. Just like we said here, the government should really support, give firm support. Uh, what inspired the initiative is my passion for tourism and love for our dear state, Anambra. And as I read in my welcome address, I said that after my studies in tourism, international tourism management, I, I deemed it right to bring the light back home. Okay. So that's exactly what inspired the initiative. It's both digital and physical. That's why we did what we do today here, to sensitize people in Oka so that they, sh they will know what we've got to offer. Because before now, I don't think any organization of this kind is in place here in the capital territory of our state. Now, definitely the potentials are great. Because you talk about uh, the things that are already in place naturally, culturally, they are there. You talk about the festivals, you talk about the people, you talk about even the resources, financial and otherwise, they are already there. Now, you're talking about the actual, I would say we are not anywhere. Any, we are not anywhere. Why I would say we are not anywhere, I want to look at what is obtainable in other developing countries. You know, so when we have a consciousness, we can make the potentials to be actual. Tourism is capital intensive. So several people want to look at the business they are going to do today and derive earnings from it the next day. And when you talk about tourism, it's something that is long term. Anambra is not an oil producing state and does not have oil in commercial quantity, yet it does not take loans or owe worker salary. According to the United Nations, Anambra has one of the lowest poverty rates in Nigeria at 11.2%, which places her ahead of 33 states. Anambra and other southeastern states lagged in education and had poor boy-child school enrollment. But today, Anambra leads the nation in WASC results. For the past three years, Anambra has had over 60% pass rates in the West African Senior School Certificate Examination. There is something to be learned from Anambra. Is it their policy? Is it their budgeting practice? Is it their sense of community? Whatever it is, it is working. The federal government and other states should study what Anambra State has been doing right and replicate it nationally. A road trip to some of the tourism destinations in Anambra State revealed a breathtaking scenery en route to Uwere Izukala Cave and Waterfalls, which is known to the locals as Obuku Cave. A natural rock formation believed to be the largest in West Africa. Hi there viewers, you're welcome to Gogi Africa. Today we are right here in Anambra State and we are going around with some very young, beautiful Nigerians who are very much interested in local tourism. Now, what state is this? Anambra State! Are we going to have fun today? Yes! And what program is this? Gogi Africa! All right, viewers, that's the way we roll on today's episode of Gogi Africa. Just stay there and you are going to have a lot of fun. 
seeing the best of Anambra State. My name is Zeneca. And I'm and Isaac Moses. And we're still with you. <laughs> We stopped over at Umuchuku to behold a spectacular health facility built by Dr. Godwin Maduka, a billionaire Nigerian-American doctor. We're right here at Umuchuku, one of the big villages, do I now call it town, in Anambra State. But the interesting thing is that the people of Anambra are so industrious and they love their home so very much that the medical doctor that lives in the U.S. has taken it upon himself to build this beautiful edifice. His intention is to build the best hospital in West Africa. We made a detour to the King's Palace in Owerezukala, where a fine reception awaited us at the palace. We just arrived at the Igwe's Palace and there's a grand reception waiting for us right here. Let's go see what's going on. Oh, Nekweya. Hi, good Welcome. morning. We left the King's Palace, escorted by local vigilantes to the cave. We have finally arrived at Were Zukana Cave. And here we are, all ready to go in and explore. These are my backpackers crew, you know, go get Africa backpackers crew. Bogey Africa Travel Club love to travel with young people that are exciting and they love adventure. If yeah. you know you love adventure, go, whoa! Yeah. So here is number uh, a check a check in point. We are explorers will be checked by uh, security men before going down to, to the cave. Arriving at the cave and waterfalls, we experienced the wonderful formation and heritage background as told by the Onou, our tour guide. Here is the natural beach. Natural Obuku Beach is here. The uh, explorers they will sit here and watch people swim, swim in the natural swimming pool. In the rainy season, this uh, pool you see here now will be a very big pool, and this waterfall will be a very big one.
The students and Gogi Africa Travel Club members had a wonderful experience at the cave. Some students immersed themselves in the sacred waters, while some took selfies and photo session with Gogi Africa anchors. Alright viewers, you're still on to Gogi Africa and we're about to exit the Owerezu Kali cave and waterfalls. Stay with us, you're still on to Gogi Africa. We then proceeded through the beautiful sceneries of Owerezu Kala to Enugu Aguilere to see the Aguve Miracle Tree, believed to have sprouted miraculously some 2,960 years ago. A trinity that shares one root. Our tour guide on arrival was His Highness Eze Tukwemeka Eri, who graciously took it upon himself to take us on a guided tour and historical background of the miracle tree. Eze Nkebo China Nibodiwa Aviabu Eze Agube Iba kana kwa tata bu Eze Agube Koji weme buna Ongolo Inye yeba Oluavu ogumpu bose no vumpu bose Osisi ya po na Ninye Ndi nana ajwa zi ese Kedi wo posi jwe po nini Onye ze Ndi nana Ndi nana ajwa ese Si mada apa na usi ya waka Si Si choiz be Kewe Ewe meche ya make wuma okwe me bie nye Ewe meche Asi mada ibu na usi ya pamu No ngwa liwa aruma mocho meni Kedi wa aruma mocho meni Wa aruma mocho meni bo Njiko takano aka ovosi ovosi bosi na to Trinity. The students also shared their experiences. Hey, my name is Mojisola and I'm in Enugu Aguleri. I'm having so much fun. Uh, I, I've learned a lot of things here. I like the culture, and I'm from the Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta. I'm here about, but I love the culture here, and I'm having fun. I'm proud to be a tourist. Um, it's been a wonderful experience on a tourism spree. I had so much fun and the exploration was really wonderful. My experience in this tour was interesting and great. In fact, for the first time I'm here, I give God the glory. I'm seeing new things and I am proud to be a tourist. Uh, my name is Jude Latinde Kenji from University, uh, Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta. I'm a Yoruba boy uh, from Oyo State. I'm here in Enugu, Aguleri, and then uh, it's been so much fun so far, uh, experiencing the culture and everything here in Aguleri. My name is Osan Roots. I'm from Unizik. I went to the waterfall and the cave, and I'm here to see the wonderful tree. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you, Goge Africa. I am very happy to visit Enugu Aguleri on tour. I like the culture, I like the people, and I appreciate students from Lagos State Polytechnic and other schools that are on this tour. I am very proud of Goji Africa. I like what you guys are doing. Uh, I would expect the host community, all members of the host community, both old and young, to help direct tourists to the destination and welcome tourists and help interpret their heritage. I visited Oolezuka uh, Waterfall and Cave. The, the, the governor has himself visited the site and he has started meeting with multinational companies to develop some of these tourist sites. Anambra State is brimming with viable tourism sites and tourism events, which Anambra Tourism Portal Initiative hopes to project digitally to the world. Tourism in Anambra State, properly harnessed, could be a strong catalyst to an emerging economy.
Professor Aisha. I'm from KB State and I'm a student of Lagos State Polytechnic. I'm proud to be a tourist with Go Get Africa. When you should take photographs. Photographs are exciting reminders to rekindle memories of exciting moments spent in the past. Tourists usually want to capture every of these moments at the slightest of opportunities. But most of the times they run into troubles with the locals because of this. You may wonder why a harmless gesture such as taking photographs can lead to dispute between tourists and locals. Most people sometimes hide their faces from cameras because they believe their spirits are taken away by the tourists with each shot. Some are camera shy and some don't just like their faces being shown on whatever platforms. Should you want to take photographs, make sure you answer the following questions. Will the locals take offense? Should you ask for permission first? Should you pay them for taking their picture? Do the locals want their pictures taken? If you find answer to these questions, you may then go ahead and take as many photos as possible. Until next week, when we meet you again, we advise you make your trips memorable and be safe. Bon voyage!